What's up everyone? Welcome back to another review. This time we're taking a look at Space Jam. Let's waste no time. Let's get right into it. Space Jam is not a perfect movie, but I love it. I still get a lot of enjoyment out of this movie. The idea of mixing Michael Jordan with the Looney Tunes is a stroke of genius, especially during the time of 1996 when Michael Jordan was bigger than the sport of basketball. And not only that, you're pretty much taking a mainstream and you're pretty much taking the mainstreamness of Michael Jordan and combining it with the Looney Tunes which has been this institution of animation and cartoons since the 50s, maybe even 40s, and now you're putting these two powers together, you get a very, very fun and entertaining sports comedy movie with Michael Jordan and the Looney Tunes playing basketball against an invading race of aliens known as the Monstars who want to kidnap the Looney Tunes for their boss, Mr. Swaghammer, and make them his new attraction. That's actually the plot of the movie. It's ridiculous, it's silly, but it works. For the context of this movie, it works. Uh, now, is Space Jam a perfect movie? No, it's not. This movie's got flaws all over the place. But this movie's got something that makes you forget about those flaws. And this movie has heart. This movie has entertainment. And this movie is really anchored by Michael Jordan, who... He's not a good actor by any stretch of the imagination, but Michael Jordan has what most, pe what, what most people don't really have, and that's a likable personality and a charm and a charisma to him, and that's pretty much what Michael Jordan brings to this movie. It's the charm and charisma of Michael Jordan, and to his credit, in, he doesn't get a lot of dialogue to say, which is really, really good. But what he does have to work with, Michael, he's not really all that half bad as an actor. He's decent. You can tell that the man is trying, but there are also moments where his, deliver where his delivery is just flat. But, again, I ain't going to discredit Michael that much. He's not an actor. You know, he, he, you know, acting is not his forte. His forte is sports. But for what he brought to this movie, but for what he brought to a movie called Space Jam, it's better what, than what you would expect from a Michael Jordan as an actor. So where this movie does get where this movie does get my, the presence of Michael Jordan right is him playing the game basketball and the scenes of him and the Looney Tunes playing basketball against the Monstars. That's where Michael really excels. And the whole third act between the Looney Tunes and the Monstars is really the best part of the whole movie. To be honest with you, it's a lot of fun. And that's not to say the rest of this movie isn't fun because I, I think this movie's got a lot of fun stuff. You know, this movie's got Wayne Knight, who plays a publicist named Stan, who is like constantly, who is like Michael's gopher, pretty much. And the comedic chemistry between Michael Jordan and Wayne Knight is actually very understated, and it's actually pretty funny, with Wayne Knight trying his hardest to please Michael and just be a yes-man to him. It's hilarious. Uh, the Looney Tunes themselves, I thought they were really, really funny. I think some of the humor is not really Looney Tunes-esque, especially the scene where Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck are talking about money and royalties. Uh, that's just weird. Why would they care about getting money back? I mean, the self-aware humor that the Looney Tunes have in certain scenes is kind of weird in a lot of instances. But they're also, but they do have, but you do get those classic moments. Right? You get classic moments of Bugs being Bugs and Daffy being Daffy, and Sylvester and Tweety having their rivalry with Yosemite Sam and Elmer Fudd and then my boy the Tasmanian Devil, all getting some moments of shine. And I enjoyed it. I liked it a lot. I thought, and Porky Pig. I was trying to forget Porky Pig. You know, the Looney Tunes, to me, in this movie, they were a lot of fun, like they always are. You can't go wrong with the Looney Tunes. Uh, the whole stuff part of Bugs Bunny being in love with the new cat they called Ola Bunny, it was okay. I think this movie w did a weird thing by trying to sexualize Lola Bunny. That was just weird. I, I think it would it just have Bugs have a crush. You don't need to make Lola, you don't need to make Lola Bunny look like a uh, Playboy Playmate. That just came across as just really, really weird. To me, at least. Like, the execution of that was just weird. Uh, but, I do like the whole subplot of the Monstars stealing the talent of NBA players. That was hilarious. And the whole montage of the NBA players who lost their talents, like Charles Barkley, Muggsy Bogus, and, uh, and uh, Patrick Ewing. The scenes where they're going through, you know, know, psychological treatment and things like that, and they have, and it's done to the uh, a cover of Basketball Jones by uh, Barry White. That's a very entertaining scene to itself. Uh, Bill Murray makes an appearance in this movie, and I love it. 
I love Bill Murray in this movie. This movie could have used more Bill Murray, to be honest with you. You get him, you get him in a scene where he's playing golf with Michael Jordan and Larry Bird, and then he doesn't come back to like the third act of the movie where he, where he helps Michael win the basketball team, ba win the basketball game. We could have used more Bill Murray peppered throughout this movie, because in the scenes that Bill was in, I loved it, and I actually think you could have gotten some good comedic mileage with Bill Murray and Michael Jordan as a tandem. That was untapped potential. This movie didn't even scratch the surface of. Uh, another thing that I don't think this movie scratched the surface of was the character of Mr. Swaghammer, who was voiced by Danny DeVito. In the scenes that DeVito was in as Swaghammer, I thought he was hilarious. The old, his old introduction scene, I thought was great. And then he had scenes, you know, peppered throughout, once more mainly when we get to the third act. Like, we don't get enough of Swaghammer all throughout this movie as a looming threat or a presence. The same goes with the Monstars, to be honest with you. We see the Monstars in their glorious manner after they steal the town out of these big giant monsters. But you get that scene, you get a scene where they harass Michael for the first time, and then they don't come back until, like, the big basketball game. Like, we don't get enough, like, I would like to have seen a scene of the Monstars as these big giants, you know, uh, you know, with uh, sharing stuff with Swaghammer. And Swaghammer, you know, being impressed at the full uh, first most most firmest, but the monsters also showing the fear that they have for their boss overall, you know, planting seeds and building up to the third act where the monsters finally stand up for themselves and get rid of Swaghammer, which they eventually do. I would have seen more, I would like to see more scenes building up to that certain point, because I think that would have been a nice little subplot for the monsters themselves and kind of give them more of a sympath uh, kind of give them more of a sympathetic play. Which I thought this movie didn't really play out. It just did it. It just it, the monsters took away Swaghammer, and the movie treated it as a running joke instead of actually making a story out of it. So like that's what I mean with with space jam. But it, I know I'm giving I, I'm I'm trying to give more story to a movie called Space Jam than it rightly deserves. Just shut up and enjoy this silly bombastic movie, which I uh, which I do. You know this movie takes a lot of cues from Roger Rabbit and mixing the live action with the animation. Uh, in certain areas it works. Other areas, not so much. But the scenes where it, where it does work is when Michael and the Looney Tunes are doing the basketball game with the Monstars. That, that to me, when it looks really, really good. And I also thought it looked really good with Daffy and with Daffy and Bugs in the real world interacting with Michael's kids and his family. That's what I also thought well worked as well too. Uh, so yeah, those are pretty much my thoughts on the original Space Jam movie. I still thoroughly enjoy it. I liked it a lot. I'm gonna give it a seven out of ten. It's still an enjoyable movie to me. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Space Jam. Let me know yours in the comment section down below. Like the video and subscribe. I'll check the back next time for more.